Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know what? Let's let's start with Maxi. Yeah, that's what that song was for. Um, I. Uh, messy. Sloppy. And I don't even know what's going on. That's what I think of every time I start to see Maxi scenes. Um. First, she's telling Brooklyn that she has to leave because, you know, she can't keep doing this whole back and forth thing. You know, her attempted to sit down and see her child and knowing every time she does, she risks her child's safety, her safety, the plan. You know, the plan that she just been, <laughs> just, you know, pretty much just kind of effing up since the beginning. Um, she's like, yo, I can't do it anymore. I gotta leave town. And Brooklyn urges her, hey, listen, we'll find a way to make this work. Yada, yada, yada. Max is like, yo, listen. This isn't working. And at this point, Monica is ready to sit there and tell my parents that I'm losing it. So I need to go. I need to do this. Right as she's sitting there saying that, Monica comes out of nowhere. And Max is like, yep, I'm already leaving. I'm going. Um, You know, I just, whatever. And, you know, Monica tries to talk to her. Like, listen, if you need help, you know, we'll get you out. You know, it's no... It's no shame, you know, I understand what you're going through to some extent, you know, like, it is what it is. Maxie leaves. And then this is where the craziness starts. Wow, I, uh, <laughs> man. Um, so she visits Nina, and Ava leaves. And then at this point, I'm not gonna lie, I'm sitting there writing notes... And halfway through it, I just said, F it. Because at that point, I didn't know what was going on. Okay, she is in tears. And she's sitting there talking about, like, she keeps talking about Max. She keeps talking about um, Brooklyn's baby. And how I keep going over there and seeing her too much. And, you know, she, she gets to a point where Nina's like, listen. You do understand that Brooklyn baby isn't your baby. Right? Like, you do know that, right? And Maxie says something. I don't remember what she said, but she said something along the lines of, how could I tell, or something like that. And I was just like, I'm sorry, what are we doing? What What are we doing at this point? <laughs> the reason why I didn't remember exactly what word that she said, because at that point, I just checked out. Like, mentally, I was, well... Honesty. Sitting up there thinking about when nine o'clock comes and I get to watch Superman and Lois. And I have my snack ready. And it's gonna be a great night. And I usually don't actually even have snacks when I'm watching shows, but this one whew, wow. But yeah, no, I just I mentally checked out and then I, I like I guess I came back to reality at some point. And I, I felt like I couldn't tell what she was saying because it's like she was yelling, but she was crying. And she was sitting there talking about something along the lines of, you know, I guess she was talking about Bailey. And she was like, her heartbeat is my heartbeat or something that she said that I was like, I'm like, what, what is she saying? I, I went back to try to write notes. I'm like, you're, what? <laughs> like she, at this point, she just lost it. Okay, she just lost it. She started babbling. It made no sense. Nina is freaking out because at this point, Nina looks at Maxie like she's having a nervous breakdown. That is the only way I can truly try to describe this scene. Is that Maxie is just having a breakdown now. I guess if you had to sit there right off the character, this is the way to go. I mean, <laughs> it started off at the Quartermain's house, and then by the time she got to Nina's, it was just, I don't know. I was to tell you, she was babbling, she was crying, and I'm going to be honest, I, I kind of just didn't care at this point, because this whole plan was just acidizing from start to finish. Listen, she had good intentions, 
okay? And at first, I was like, I didn't really understand it because I was like, Peter's not a killer. But then somebody in the comment section, a couple people in the comment section kind of brought it to my attention. It's not about the killing. It's about, you know, what he can do to that child psychologically. And I was like, okay, I understand. I understand her plan, what she's going to do. And at first, she was like, I'm going to sit there and take this baby and I'm going to give it to somebody and I'm going to just go away from poor Charles. And somewhere along the lines, that just got screwed up, and then Brooklyn wound up getting the child. And then Maxie just kept messing up her own plan. And every day, every single episode, she kept messing up her plan. I was just like... After a while, I wasn't even doing it. It was just mentally at that point, because I was just like, alright, this, this is just officially stupid. I mean, on top of the fact that I felt like this story line... And I'm sounding like a broken record was broken. Okay? So, yeah, this is pretty much what we get. We get Maxie having a nervous breakdown. Nina's freaking out. And, like, apparently she's sitting there talking about how Bailey is her baby. And then she's, at one point, you know, that was something else that, that scared Nina. Now I sit there and think about it. Because Nina was like, yo, you're, you, you're not going to sit there and kidnap Bailey and, and pass her off as your own. And Maxie was like, what's the difference or something like that? Isn't it the same thing or, or something like that? I was like, I don't even know what the hell is going on at this point. I have no idea. I'm I'm lost. I've been watching this show since 2001. There's been questionable moments here and there. A little bit. Decisions, whatever. This scene, I... I don't... I'm at a loss for words. That's pretty much the only thing I can sit there and say about it. And so, let's just move on. Um, what is Spencer doing? I don't really understand his storyline. I've been thinking about it all day. And today was just one of those episodes where it's like, well, what is he doing? I mean, he... Runs into Trina, or Trina runs into him, he's hanging out, like, at a tree, like, he's, like, literally sitting on top of a tree for some odd reason, like, he's, I don't know, 12 years old or something, but he's hanging out at a tree, and he's talking to Trina, and things are casual, whatever, gets to a point where Trina looks at her phone, and Spencer says something along the lines of, like, millennials are, you know, looking at your phone instead of seeing what's in front of you or something like that. And Trina was like, listen, I'm only texting Jocelyn because at this point she thinks that you are a fake person. But I can fix that. So she is about to sit there and take a selfie with him. He freaks out. He literally freaks out. He's like, no, you can't do that. Da -da 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 -da. Like, he just walks away, and I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? Now, granted, this adds to my, what was his plan? What were they plan? What was the writer's plan for actually introducing this character? So he does that, and Trina's like, what is going on? Spencer, he seems like an intelligent person. You know, he was brought up by Nicholas and, you know, family and stuff like that, and... I don't understand what made him tell one of the worst lies I think I've heard all year in a TV show. I mean, this guy was just like, oh, I wanted to make sure the filter was right and, you know, um, the lighting and the backdrop and everything like that. And Trina was like, um, I never took you for a, a diva, like, kind of person or whatever. Trina doesn't look at this situation like, what is he hiding? Why is it every time I want to introduce him to my friends, he's nowhere to be found. He constantly keeps ghosting me, but he seems like he's interested in me. Or, interested. But yet, he freaks out the minute I take out my phone because he doesn't, wait, he doesn't like the way the lighting works. Or the lighting looks on him. That's not what she's thinking. That's what any other normal person would sit there and think. But that's not what she's thinking. And she just kind of just drops the whole thing. And then... I don't know. I guess he says he's going to call her or something like that. Or max message her or something. I'm not going to lie. I just... 
Trina isn't a bad looking girl. She's she's pretty, you know? She can get somebody her age, you know what I'm saying? She can get somebody else. I don't understand. I don't understand why she's trying so hard. Like at one point she meets up with Ava and she's like, Hey, listen, do you have any information about um, you know, Curtis new barback hire? None of that stuff that he was sitting there doing was red flags for you. None of it, really? Okay, sure. So she tries to get some information. Which to be honest, I don't think that even she knows, but like the reason why this story just doesn't really make any sense is because he's sitting there trying to get close to Trina, like he's interested in her, but yet he doesn't want everyone else to know that he's back in town. Which I really don't know why. I mean, no one suspected Tr no one suspected Spencer before when this whole thing started. They're gonna suspect him now that he's there. I mean, he just showed up. Like in the episode, he shows up, he talks to Nicholas and stuff like that. He's like, "Father, I've returned." Okay, that's kind of dramatic, but whatever. Um, but. You know, he's trying to sit there and keep a low profile. And he's asking Trina all these questions as far as, like, you know, did the cops... Like, what did the cops say or anything like that? Just try to get some intel on, you know, if he's going to be close to being caught. And they talked about his shoes and boot prints and stuff like that. Or footprints or whatever. And I'm just like... This makes no sense. The ducking, the dodging, everything like that. The fake names. I mean... Why is that even all necessary? I mean, there's such a thing as hiding in plain sight. And I feel like that just would have worked a lot better than all this trouble, all this nonsense that he's doing. And that Trina does not see this as a red flag. It's just like, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, I guess the writers just assume that everyone is just going to like the new Nicholas so far. I mean, the new Spencer so much that we're just going to be all snowed by the fact that none of this and what he's doing makes any sense which by the way I don't really understand why he's in town I mean he's had a bunch of people unless he was doing it all himself he seemed like he had a bunch of people that was sitting there doing all this stuff I, I don't know this whole story with Spencer is just I don't know yeah I have no idea um Let's talk about let's let's talk about this whole meeting thing because up until this point it's a lot of chit chat. You got Ned practically asking permission to sit there and go back to work at ELQ um, to um, Olivia, and Olivia pretty much like listen, you can go back, do what you want, just keep everything in perspective. You know, don't go all sideways like you did before. Um, and of course, Michael's like, listen, you can be you know run ELQ. Which I honestly tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie, I felt like that was the best thing for Michael to do. I mean, the thing is, when Michael was sitting there running ELQ, there was constant complaints about how, you know, because he decided to try to go with more green energy and more, like, not pollution and stuff like that and shady companies and stuff like that, that he was losing the company a lot of money. Um... You know, compared to, like, Ned or anyone else that was not there dealing with ELQ. Like, <laughs> he was losing the company money. Um, and that's before um, Nicholas stepped in or whatever and kind of, like, took over. And I guess, like, he got it back somehow or whatever. But, you know, it was one of those things where it was, like, it was kind of the obvious choice. You know, and plus, you know, he already has a company to run, so it's no sense of doing both of them and he has a son and a family is like it's too much um valentine is already you know to sit there and be like all right i'm pretty much out there's really no point he's not even trying at this point he's like all right whatever um then you got scott talking to austin and up until this point which i'm not gonna lie was somewhat kind of a time waster but whatever all Scott kept saying is, saying is, oh, when you come in, you make this big move, you're going to have a lot of money, but also a lot of problems. And Austin's just like, I don't care. I'm still going to work. I'm still going to be a doctor. All this other stuff doesn't matter. Like, whatever. So finally, the meeting gets started. 
And everyone's ready to vote. Scott walks in and like, yo, you uh, you, you missing the quarter main. And at first, you know, everyone's sitting there commenting and stuff like that. Like, what are you talking about, Monica, once again? It's like, oh, what are you doing in my house? It's like, it's a play... It, I don't want to sit there and say it's a played out joke, but it's just one of those jokes like, yes, Monica, we all know it's your house. Like, we get it. Um, Austin walks in. And Michael, you know, he gets up or whatever. He's like, he pretty much like, who the hell are you? He was like, oh, no need, no need to be, uh, you know, hostile or whatever. But like, who the hell are you or whatever? I was like, I can't imagine if I walked into a room and somebody was like, who the hell am I? Am I not going to feel a little defensive? You know? But, um... Which almost seems like it's kind of unlike Michael, to be honest. But, whatever. Um... But Austin sits there and says, you know, he gives his name or whatever. He doesn't say quarter main. But I guess we're going to sit there and find out tomorrow more about that. Um... And, of course, you know, Brooklyn is sitting there all worried because, you know, the plan or whatever that crap is, is all gonna be blown out. I have a feeling. I have a feeling because we don't know Austin and stuff like that. I have a feeling that maybe Austin may blackmail Brooklyn in some manner. I just have a feeling. Um, you know, the guy who plays him, you know, he, Roger or whatever, he, he, he knows how to tap into his dark side, okay? I mean, Todd. Todd. So I guess we're going to find out. Let's talk about Just Mike and the Nixon Fall storyline. After Mike, I can't even believe I'm calling him Mike. After Sonny calls Nina to sit there and check on her, find out when she's coming back. And Nina gives that answer of, oh, I don't know. I guess we'll just wait and see. Fly by the seat of my parents, apparently, or whatever. And she hangs up and... Lenny, you know, because at this point, Phyllis and Sonny are worried about Lenny and stuff like that in his heart. And he just come back from the doctors and Lenny's like, I'm feeling great, yada, 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 I'm fine. I feel 20, 35 years younger. Like, he's ready to go out and party. He wants to take Phyllis out. Phyllis is excited. She wants to sit there and get a new dress. And Sonny's like, yo, y'all do y'all. And I'm just mind the bar. Um... Now, before, you know, um, Lenny came in with all this burst of energy, and by the way, I'm not going to lie, I knew something was wrong, not just because of the fact that Sonny was sitting there talking to Phyllis, and, you know, Sonny was like, well, how is Lenny doing? Like, you're a nurse, like, how is he really doing? And Phyllis was like, I can't tell. Like, I couldn't get a read on a doctor one way or the other, but, you know, we'll find out. And, um... So they're all excited and everything like that. And they're about to sit there. Actually, to tell you the truth, Phyllis is about to sit there and walk out and get a dress and everything like that. And then the doctor comes in. And at this point, if you're watching it, you already know what's going to wind up happening. Hell, I even already wrote it. The minute that, <laughs> I think even before the doctor came in, I was just like, mm, 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 and then I put a question mark. Doctor comes in. Talks to Phyllis and Lenny. Sonny makes himself scarce. The commercial break is over. The doctor says, I wish I had better nerves. <sighs> and right then and there, I knew. Now, like most people, I have not liked this Nixon 4 storyline. It's too long. I like certain parts of it, but overall, I, I just didn't really care for it, you know, it lasted way too long, um, and so, you know, like everyone else, I was like, alright, I'm ready to go back, you know, I'm ready for him to go back to be sunny, and yeah, you know, listen, Phyllis, you're annoying, Lenny, I, I don't really know about you anymore, I, I just don't, um, but I was like, alright, I'm ready for you side characters to go, Sunny to get back to business, and, um, things to get back in order. But with that being said, <laughs> man, did I actually feel bad for Lenny. I felt really bad for Lenny. I, I felt bad for Lenny because, you know, if you're ever... 
I also felt like it just kind of hit a little bit too close to home. And I think that's the reason why I was getting a little more emotional than normal. But, um, I don't know. I just, I felt bad for Lenny because I knew that, you know, Lenny didn't want to sit there and worry his wife. His wife is not there worried, but she just wants to be strong for him. And it just, just when they seemed like they were about to have one good night, it was like, like, really? Really? <laughs> you couldn't just give him until tomorrow? Like, just come over tomorrow? I had, I, I wanted to sit there and do it. I was in the area. Dude, really? I don't know. I know it's a doctor's job and everything like that, and you can't hide away from the truth. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you just couldn't give him, like, one night of happiness? No? We're not even going to do that? Okay. All right, cool. So, yeah, the doctor left, and, you know, Sonny's like, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? What's going on with Lenny? What's going on with Lenny? Did he really just say what's going on with Lenny? Do you not see the look on Phyllis and Lenny's face? And he said what's going Ah, uh, okay. Alright. Uh. <sighs> what's going on with Lenny? I just... I'm not even going to get into that. Oh, what? Nina and Ava was having a conversation, and I'm not going to lie, I felt like every time Nina was talking to Ava, <laughs> Nina was just lying straight to her face, backstabbing her, and it was just like, alright, we're still doing this, you know, when Ava was like, you know, what's going on with Mike, is he going to come out here, and Nina was just like, no, he doesn't have a, you know, we don't have a future in Nick's we don't have a future out here, and the reason why I left out here is because I was being hurt out here. And I was just like, alright, this chick really just said something along the lines of, you know, everyone in town was against me, and, you know, I was constantly getting hurt and stuff like that. And I was like, Nina, whose fault is this? Oh, wait, it's your fault. To some extent. I mean, Valentine, what he did to Nina, that's, that's on Valentine, but... Alright, I guess what Jax did. Alright, I, 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 maybe, maybe she was a little hurt. Alright, let me, let me kind of just take that back a little bit. But the point is, watching those two talk and watching Nina just sit there and lie to Ava's face about Mike and, you know, she has all this work to do and stuff like that. It was just like, just, every time I kept Nathan and her talk, just lies, 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 lies. Lies, 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 that's pretty much all I heard at this point. Um... And of course, Ava talks. Ava sits there and talks about the gallery, and you know the stalker and how she misses Nicholas, but she doesn't want to talk about it. Let's talk about Nicholas for a minute, cause I, I'm gonna be honest. I just that whole scene is just. <sighs> Let's talk about Nicholas. Pretty much acting like a spoiled brat. Oh my goodness, this guy is just so self entitled. He's. Having the rest, the rest of Ava's stuff moved out, he snuck there drinking, and Laura comes over, and, you know, Nicholas is all like, oh, well, she's leaving, and I offered to run away with her. And I love how he starts that sentence, I offered, you know, I offered to sit there and run away with her, you know, me and her and Avery. I was like, bro, you, uh, <laughs> you, you, you sure that's it? You sure that's the... You done? That's the rest of your sentence? You don't want to talk about Spencer? No? We just... Did you just forget that you had a child? Like, I just... I don't understand that. But he's not there brooding and whining and pouting and... You know, his mother is not there trying to make him feel better like he's a 12-year-old child. And it's just like... <sighs> but Laura gave him some sort of good news. Talking about the police investigation. Um... The shoes or whatever, like it's sold in only a few American stores, and they're tracking it down. Um, and you know, Nicholas is like, oh, well, what if that person paid in cash, bro? What do you want? <laughs> like, what do you want? What do you want, Nicholas? I want to know, what do you want? Oh, yeah, you want what you want, and damn what everyone else. Okay, yeah, I forgot. Okay, sure. So after that, um, you know, a little temper tantrum that he had. They talk, about, they talk about Spencer, and 
you know, at some point, Laura's like, you know, I'm surprised he's been mad at you for this long. And I'm like, you know, to some extent, me too. To some extent. I mean, not really hearing. I mean, I mean, the way they was not there talking about it. Um, I don't know. This whole story, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, Nicholas is sitting there trying to sit there and tell Laura that, you know, I haven't talked in a while and he barely talks to me and yada, 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 which could be true because at one point they were in cahoots, but then Ava did find out and Spencer's like, I'm not coming back there until Ava's gone. And I'm just like, bro, listen, I get that you're upset with your dad because your dad did a dick move, okay? But your dad is generally a dick. But, I mean, to be gone for this long, to have this much of a grudge, to sit there and be like, alright, I'm going to cut him out of my life completely? Really? I mean, the thing is, every, talk, every time he talks about, you know, his mother with, um, with Trina, you can hear a bit of sadness in his voice. You know, you would sit there and think that, you know what, time is so short, you never know what's going to wind up happening, that maybe I shouldn't be that upset with my dad, I mean, that upset with my dad, but, I, I don't know, they talk for a little bit, and at some point, again, Spencer walks in like a father, I've returned, okay, that's a little dramatic, but, okay, sure, whatever, um, and that's pretty much where it ends. I'm not gonna lie, I know I missed something. I don't know what yet, but I know I missed something. Because <sighs> I usually write my notes like I'm writing a book. But, um... But yeah, I'm just double checking. But yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna go. I hope everyone actually has a great night. Um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. <laughs> Superman Lois. So I have to say. Anyway, with that being said, thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video.